In the previous video, you learned how you can create a basic smart report. In this video, we'll dive into some of the more advanced customization options available in the designer view. Since we know we're going to be customizing an export for this CRD, let's take a moment to jot down the levels that are in the document so that we can match those levels with the report part. For that, feel free to grab a pen and paper, or you can use a notepad. We'll be taking note of the work item types and levels. It's helpful to have the document open next to the form view of the smart report. This helps you easily cross-reference the different work items and levels. Let's start with the first one. We have a document so we can jot down the level as level 1. The second item here is an introduction. We can see that it lines up with a section work item, so we'll add at level 2 section. At this point, it's a good idea to clarify some of the rules that are important when jotting down these levels for your smart report. If you see two different work items at different levels, jot them down. So of course, document and section two different work items and they're at different levels. If you have two work items that are the same and are also at the same level, you ignore it. So we can see here that our second work item, the overview, is also a section, and it's also at level 2. A quick and easy way to tell which level a work item is at is to count. Here we have two numbers, so it's at level 2. We already have a section work item at level 2, so we ignore the overview. What about the work item titled scope? Same thing, it's at level 2 and it's a section work item. It's repeated, so we ignore it. Here. We have a section work item, but it's not at the same level as the previous section work item. Another important rule is that if you have the same work item type at a different level, you'll jot it down. Now at level 3, there is a section work item. The element titled out scope is also at level 3 as you can see, so we can ignore it. There is another section here which is at level 2. So we ignore. Now, we see that there is an epic. We can tell it's at level 3 because there are three numbers here. Another rule. If you have two different work items at the same level, you jot them down. At level 3, we already have a section, and we're going to add an epic at that same level. Underneath the epic, we have a feature. Level 4, there is a feature. Underneath the feature, there's a user story. So we'll jot down the user story at level 5. There are many other user stories here, all of which are at the same level, so we can ignore those additional user stories. Now that all of the levels of the document have been jotted down, we can create a report part that corresponds with those levels. You can select the designer view to customize your report part. Please keep in mind that everything you'll see today is just one of many possibilities. You can design your report part in any way that works best for you and those consuming the information. It's also important to note that once you've created your custom report part, it can be reused across projects that have the same process template. So let's start building a report part. Click New. This area is similar to the Meta Template Designer in that you will be selecting the work item types and their levels. At level 1, we know there's a document, so select Document from the Work Item Type drop down. The system doesn't automatically rename each level according to its work item type, so you can double click on each one and rename it. At level 2, is a section using this arrow. You can add a section at level 2. Select section from the work item type drop down. At level 3, there is a section and an epic. Use the arrow to add a child beneath the section and select section from the work item type drop down. Then you can add a sibling for that section by clicking on the plus sign. That sibling will be an epic. 
which we'll choose from the Work Item Type drop-down. I'm also renaming the level as Epic using that same concept. You can go ahead and continue to add your different levels and work item types. When you're ready, save your smart report. You'll see that the default folder where the smart report is saved is the smart docs folder. That's because we initiated the smart report from the smart docs module. There are many other modules where smart report is available, in which case the smart report will be saved in that associated folder. Go back to the report view. Generate your report. This is what it looks like. Now you can apply further customization according to your needs. For instance, you could remove this document work item from the export back to the designer view. At the document level, you can remove these fields. Change this field to value area. and remove the label you can also remove the numbering save and go back to the report this is what it looks like now when you generate the report that document work item has been removed let's go back to the designer view and add some more customization to this smart report you can group fields together on the same line for instance, the ID and title can be grouped by clicking on each field and selecting this option. You could also remove the labels for any fields and for the section work item. Perhaps you want to see the description instead of the state. You can select that from the drop down here. If you wanted to, you could also remove that label. Save the report. This is what the sections look like. Now generate the report so you see how the smart report is beginning to take shape. Going back to the designer, you can continue to add customization for all of these levels of work items in the various fields. If you're going to be importing a word template that already has numbering, you can deselect the numbering option for your different work items. You can continue to add customization for each one of these work item types, doing things like grouping fields, removing labels, adding additional fields, and so on. Up until this point, you've seen the report in a form view. You can also choose a table view or a form as table view for the user stories. Let's look at the table view now. Each one of these fields will be columns in your table. Let's go ahead and add the description field to the table. You can change the column width for each one of these fields. I'll take off the numbering. You can also add captions to your table. Save your report and go back to the report view. This is what it looks like now, and here's how it looks after generating the report. In this video, you've seen how you can apply different types of customization to the work items in your report. In the next video, you'll see how you can prepare your smart report for export to a variety of formats by applying styling and bringing in your Word templates. Thank you for watching.